This is a 68-year-old road tunnel link. It links Norfolk and Hampton, two waterfront areas in Virginia. When it opened in 1957, it quickly replaced the inefficient ferry service and made traveling easier for thousands. But there is a catch. Its initial design had a capacity for 77,000 vehicles per day. Fast forward to today, nearly 100,000 vehicles use this passage daily. It was time for a long overdue expansion, one that will cost Virginia almost $4 billion. This is the story of Virginia's most expensive construction project to date. You don't have to tell motorists that the Hampton Roads crossing is congested. They already know that since 1987. Back in 1987, just like today, slow moving. Well, a four mile backup did slow traffic for about a couple of hours this morning. For context, this was only 30 years after the tunnel was constructed. Fast forward to today, the condition has only gotten worse. Nearly 3 million passengers use these roads per month. During peak times, backups can stretch for up to six miles, leading to hours of delays. An expansion was long overdue. The Hampton Road Bridge Tunnel expansion was formally announced in 2019. It took the state more than 20 years of feasibility reports and countless environmental studies to do the obvious. Add more lanes. In a nutshell, the project will widen the 10 miles of highway from four lanes to eight lanes. Theoretically, this should double the bridge's capacity. We will discuss later how that might not be the case, but for now, let's stick to the basics. To understand what's going to change with the crossing, we first need to look at its current structure. The Hampton Bridge Tunnel is a 3.5 mile long crossing for the Interstate 64 and US Route 60. Travelers start from the I-64 from Hampton and then transition onto the above water bridge until they reach the Northern Island. This island acts as a transition point for the road into a tunnel. After emerging from the Southern Island, the road continues on a bridge spanning Willoughby Bay connecting to Norfolk. The crossing consists of two spans, one headed to the east and the other to the west. The four billion expansion will add two new tunnels, which will be dedicated to eastbound traffic. The old tunnels will be used by westbound traffic. Currently, the eastbound and westbound traffic share two tunnels, leading to frequent congestion. But with this new change, both will have their separate portals and tunnel systems. This will enhance the capacity from 5,000 cars per hour to now 6,000 per hour. Once completed, the crossing will expand from four lanes to six lanes on land and eight lanes over and under the water. Now it does sound simple upon hearing, but doing the actual work is a whole different thing. It involves widening the I-64 highway on both sides of the Hampton Roads. New marine trestles will add over water to create a separate lane for eastbound traffic. The project will add a third lane in each direction and a part-time drivable shoulder as the final lane. The final can be opened as a travel lane when traffic is heavy. The twin tunnels are being dug by this monster. It's a tunnel boring machine named Mary. Despite its pleasant name, the TBM weighs nearly 4,700 tons. It excavates, stabilizes, and installs tunnel lining simultaneously while advancing underground. Mary took 51 weeks to dig from South Island to North Island, completing its phase in April 2024. Upon completion, the Hampton Crossing will have four general purpose lanes and the other four would be high occupancy toll lanes. This project is complex because it combines both tunnels and bridges in its design. It's quite an unusual sea crossing in that way. Around the world, when you have to cross some kind of water body, Engineers either dig a continuous tunnel or a bridge, but the Hampton Road crossing consists of both of these at different intervals. So what's the reason for this? To answer this, we have to first understand its location. Hampton Roads sits along the U.S. East Coast where the James Nansamun and Elizabeth Rivers flow into the Chesapeake Bay. Given the area's proximity to the Atlantic Ocean, this was considered an ideal spot for marine operations. That would explain why the world's largest naval base is situated here. The Naval Station Norfolk is the headquarter and home port of the U.S. Navy's Fleet Forces Command. The installation occupies about four miles of waterfront space, just enough for 75 naval ships to park across. Just a short distance from the naval base, we have the Port of Virginia, 
It's one of the busiest commercial ports on the East Coast. That's why the HRBT incorporates a tunnel in its design so that the marine operations are not disturbed. Now, theoretically, they could have created a bridge that was high enough to let ships pass through. But in the case of a war or a natural disaster, the broken infrastructure could block the vital shipping channels. Now, before the HRBT was introduced, people had two ways to cross the harbor. One was to hop on a 30-minute ferry ride that would take you to and from the peninsula. The ferry system could accommodate approximately 2,500 motorists a day. The second way was to embark on a 25-mile detour via Route 17 and the James River Bridge. As the population of Hampton Roads increased, these two were no longer viable options for a growing metropolitan area. In November 1957, the original two-lane structure of HRBT was inaugurated. It took three years to complete and featured a 12-foot lane. In just seven minutes, motorists were able to cross the harbor for a toll fee of $1.25. Given the convenience, the Hampton Bridge Tunnel won over other ways of crossing the harbor. Within a year, more than 6,000 vehicles were passing through its portals daily. With a price tag of $44 million, the bridge tunnel design broke many records. It was one of the first of its kind to utilize a bridge plus tunnel system. The underwater tunnel between the two artificial islands had a length of more than 7,000 feet, the longest at the time. The creation of the two artificial islands required 130,000 tons of heavy stones. All this was dumped in the ocean to create a bedrock for the portal entry. The North Island connects to the Hampton Tunnel entrance in Phoebus, while the Southern Island is on the Norfolk side near Willoughby Spit. The tunnel stretching between these two islands was built using a technique called prefabrication. In simple terms, the tube sections of the tunnel were created in dry conditions on land. The tunnel was formed from 23 double shell tube sections, each of them 300 feet long and requiring nearly 600 tons of structural steel to construct. Each section was then transported by a tugboat to the actual tunnel site. From 1972 to 1976, another tunnel was built alongside the Hampton Crossing. This expanded the two-lane crossing to the current four lanes. The expansion came at a cost of $95 million and was largely funded as part of the Federal Aid Highway Act. Only 10% came from Virginia taxpayers. The Federal Highway Act was the catalyst behind the highway culture in America. Since 90% of the cost was borne by the federal government, it was a lucrative deal for the American states to develop their infrastructure. As a result, states across the country rushed to expand highways bridges and tunnels, transforming America's transportation landscape. The Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel expansion was part of this nationwide push, helping to accommodate increasing traffic demands between Norfolk and Hampton. Despite initial success, the highway culture fueled by the Highway Act also contributed to increasing car dependency. Currently, almost 73% of American commuters use their car to move between home and work, making it the most popular mode of transportation. So, if you're from America, surviving without a car is almost impossible. The new and safer highways emerging from the Federal Act prompted more people to buy automobiles. This led to a steady rise in car ridership with time. America is now stuck in a dilemma. It can't just rip off these highways, nor it can ignore them. As a result, it has to spend billions on upgrading highways throughout the country. Utah is spending $3.7 billion for expanding the Wainuari 15 highway. The Brooklyn Queens Expressway is also getting a $4 billion makeover, and that's just the icing on the cake. As of 2023, there were at least seven federally funded highway projects across the country slated to cost nearly $16 billion. It may seem logical to expand highways to counter congestion. If you want to double the motorway capacity, just add a few more lanes. The widest highways in the U.S. have more than 20 lanes. However, in recent years, researchers have pointed out that more lanes don't usually mean less congestion. So the four new lanes being added at HRBT for a cost of $4 billion might actually be useless. According to this theory called induced demand, the additional lanes will encourage more people to drive, ultimately leading to the same level of congestion as before. When road capacity increases with new lanes, the traffic initially improves. But over time, more drivers take advantage of the extra space, whether they are switching from public transit 
taking more trips, or moving further away from city centers. The most well-documented example is of Katy Freeway in Houston. At its widest point, the expressway had 26 lanes, including service roads. This made it one of the widest highways in the world. It was expanded in 2008 with a cost of $2.8 billion. And yet by 2014, travel times increased by 30% in the morning. So will the Hampton Roads bridge tunnel expansion suffer the same fate? Critics argue that without alternatives like improved public transit or dedicated bus lanes, the $4 billion investment might only provide temporary relief. Currently, Hampton Roads boasts a population of 1.8 million, ranking it as the 37th largest metropolitan area in the United States. The population is spread across 17 localities highlighted in green. Among these, Norfolk and Hampton are situated at the forefront of the Atlantic Ocean. A big task was to accommodate the growing traffic between these two regions without disturbing the naval operations. Since 2012, various alternatives have been proposed to enhance the capacity of the Hampton Roads crossing. As early as 2008, there was a proposal to add two lanes, creating a contiguous six-lane facility. However, it was dismissed since it didn't provide adequate congestion relief. The option of reversible lanes was also explored, but dismissed due to safety concerns with two-way operations. Perhaps the most unique option was to build a high bridge. This could either have been a suspension bridge or a cable-stayed one. However, there were a few issues with this proposal. The bridge would have to be significantly tall to allow large ships to pass underneath, which would have increased construction costs and complexity. Moreover, the U.S. Navy requires that no bridges be constructed above major navigable waterways. Since this is the world's largest naval installation, the vessels require no visual obstruction on their route. Finally, at the beginning of 2019, the current expansion plan was green-lighted. The construction is expected to wrap up by February 2027, with operations starting in August of the same year. Let's hope that this expansion does bring down congestion in the coming years. Do you think the project will achieve its goal, or will it only be a temporary fix? If you agree with the latter statement, we have created a video on the highway system in America. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will catch up in the next one.